Hi everyone, Paul I Sam. Welcome to another Stay at the Bench update. So yes, Stay at the Bench. Before we get going today, watch this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notification to get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. So yes, my, my motto at the minute is hashtag stay at the bench. Obviously, it's stay at home, stay at the bench, at the bench same thing um so yeah don't be doing any necessary travel don't be going out and socializing we don't need to stay in your house as much as you possibly can and stay at your bench we've been doing live hangouts not shows live hangouts nearly every day twice a day sometimes i plan to do one this afternoon after this um and they're proving very popular and for me, what it is, I'm looking for things to watch on YouTube. I watch a lot of YouTube now. I didn't used to. I don't watch any modelling at all, really, because when I'm done in here, I want to get away from modelling and have an escape. So I watch car channels, um, knife making, all sorts of stuff like that. And I've been constantly on the lookout for new stuff, and there's been not a lot of up, uppage in content, which I thought there would have been. So I thought, let's put our hangouts live. They're, they're happening every day anyway. Let's put them live. Be semi cleaning them as much as we can and um, get them out there for sure so we've been doing that a lot of appreciation from a lot of people a lot of good feedback as well so thank you everyone to give us the feedback joined us commented joined in and everything hopefully we can add a bit more interest to people's days and um, take away a bit of the monotony what's going on around the world is awful and sadly in the UK it's only going to get worse um, we're, we're here for the long haul, I think. But I'm not going to talk about it too much because I don't want this to be all doom and gloom. One thing I will say, and I'm hearing rumours out there that Royal Mail will be shutting down uh, non-essential posts next week. So it's Sunday today, the 29th. So couriers are still operating, as we know, and ours will keep going for until they're told they can't. That's what we've been officially been told. Um, they're going to continue until they're told they can't which means we can still operate and continue as a business for the foreseeable future. Um, but yeah, if you need anything, not just modelling, make sure you buy it now. Plan ahead for the coming months, and it is going to be months, sadly, um, and buy whatever you need now to last. I've been racking my brains with everything, dog food, fish, shrimp stuff, modelling supply, surprise, surprise, supplies the lot everything just thinking ahead of anything i need now that's my mission if you need it grab it now this isn't going to be three weeks at all it's going to be a lot longer so make sure you're going to provisions and what have you for the, the postal system does stop you don't run out of things i'm gonna have a little run around of this in a minute uh well not run walk um because a few things have changed i've cleared out the stash a bit cleared out the display case a bit things have moved around a bit just going to run through. I'm just trying to do a long bench update, and it will be long because trust me, when you see the kit I've got to look at in a minute, it will be. But yeah, I've got plenty of provisions modeling wise. I've stocked up on a few other things uh, like spare filters for the respirators, um, kitchen roll, cotton board, just things I use, sundries I use all the time. Paints I'm well and truly stocked up on. You all laughed at me with all my paints, but I've got enough paints to last for a long, long time. UMP is pretty well stocked. Myself and Leah putting in last-minute orders with all our suppliers as much as we can. Um, and we will operate for as long as we can. Everything's still going out as normal. Uh, the only change is we're not using Royal Mail anymore for foreign deliveries. We're just using UPS and DPD. And the knock-on effect of that is if you're overseas, you may have noticed the postal cost has gone up a touch. The benefit of that is you'll get it a lot quicker. So swings and roundabouts. But yeah, bear that in mind. But we are fully operating. We work from home. Myself and Hannah don't need to go out to go to work. Everything is here. All the postal systems done here, and it's all sent out from here. So we're fine now. And I we're not leaving the house other than the essentials, which is doctor's appointments, which I've got on Tuesday, which I'm really not looking forward to. Um, they're trying to do phone appointments, but I've got blood pressure and blood tests to do, so not going to work. Uh, shopping as and when we need it, which we don't really just yet. And of course, we've got a storage unit for all the UMP stuff. We run lower stuff. We go there and get it. Now the beauty of our storage unit is it's a driving one. We can drive right up to our locker. So we pull up, a shutter opens, we drive in, the shutter closes. But the only people in there, there's never anybody there ever. Open our storage unit, load up what we need, 
back drive back out and back home. We didn't have to get out the car into public. It's brilliant. Um, so there's any reasons why we're leaving home. We're not going out to take James out or going to the pub or anything stupid like that. We are literally staying at home. And uh, yeah, that's how it is. So stay safe, stay at home, stay at the bench. That's it. We're done on that now. Right, so <laughs> I've finished a couple of builds. Well, finished one and started another. We finished a Supra last time. And I thought I'll start on my memorial bill for Mark Hawkins' memorial bill, which is on the Facebook page. I did a bit of work on the Chevelle. That's coming along well. We should get that finished this week coming up. Um, and I thought I'll start at Evo 6. I bought some aftermarket decals for the uh, Marlboro sponsorships. Uh, and I'll work on my JPS BMW. Both kits went wrong in a terrible way. The old JPS Beamer was finished in the Pro Range 2K. It's not as good as the Gravity. The finish isn't as good, but it persevered, went through. We polished it all up. It looked great. The last finishing touch was gluing the antenna on the roof. There's a little stub that sticks up on the E30. I put the antenna on. Little, little dab of CA glue. Left it there. Thought, right, we'll leave that overnight, and tomorrow I'll give it a good polish up. I'll take some pics. Got it out of the case the next morning, looked around, and there was a super glue haze on the roof. I have no idea what had happened, but somehow super glue haze had spread all over the clear coat. It's probably about nearly an inch in diameter. And I was just like, oh, God. So I could probably save it by sanding it back, polishing it all up, but I really didn't want it. So it's just in the display case. I'll get to it at some point, and we'll get some pics up. But yeah, a bit disappointed about that, and I've never, ever had that reaction before. So, very, very strange. I use minimal CA glue where I can, and it was just a tiny dab right in the center, a good 5 mil above the roof, and it spread. So, that's that one. I thought, right, okay. I crack on my Evo 6. We got it all painted up, primed, painted, decaled. I put a barrier coat of LP9 down, but I put it on too thick. Distracted totally. Uh, I've not been feeling great lately. The old anxiety has been absolutely kicking my ass again. Um, put the, the clear coat on a little bit too thick. It... it Went on too thick because you need mist coats and build it up. But I, I hosed it on by accident and it dried really strange. So I sanded it back after it dried. It looked good, decaled it all, 2K'd it. It looked fantastic. Came back the next day and I can still see that flaw in the LP9 underneath the 2K. And I was like, oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. Second kit of kind of it looks good, it'll look fine, but for me, I'm not happy with it. I'm not going to put another week's work into a kit that I'm not happy with. So I wrote it off. I wrote it off. I know Lee, who bought my Volvo off me uh, to finish off and did a great job, is thinking of buying it. If you want to buy it, by all means, Lee, go ahead, mate. Um, you'll do a great job. And it looks good just for me. I wasn't happy with it. So I wrote it off. I bought more of the Marlboro decals, so we will revisit it. And I sat here really annoyed with myself, thinking, this is because I'm not concentrating. Because I'm distracted, I don't fully concentrate on what I'm doing. That's the reason the RC213 build hasn't continued I am not fully with it, and if I'm not fully interested in building that right now, which I'm not, if I'm honest, I'll do a half arse job on it. It's too expensive a kit, I don't want to do a terrible job on it, so it's all boxed back up, and it's back up there in the stash. We will come back to it, 100% will come back to it, I just need to get my head straight a little bit. What's going on in the last few months, and what's going on now, is driving around the bend. Um, so yeah, just bear that in mind, a lot of people ask about the bike kit, I will get back to it, I promise. Now... <laughs> I was thinking I would build the Skyline as well, me and Sam built the Skyline, I was finishing that off and I just sat there thinking, I'm just not interested in building this, it's just not catching my attention at the minute. So I decided to box that back up, it's under there somewhere it is. So again, it's nearly finished, we'll get to it at some point, um, but for now I want to build something I'm interested in that makes me want to come out here and sit and enjoy. So I've decided to build something I've wanted to build for a long, long time. It is my holy, holy grail kit, and that may be a hint to what it is. Big Ernst Senna fan. And yeah, we'll go overhead and have a look in a minute. But this is my holy grail kit. I've had this about four years. It's the Tamiya 12 scale McLaren MP4 6 Senna's car uh, with the Marlboro scheme on it. I got the 12 scale kit, about 350 quid over the top studio aftermarket. And yeah, it's a big build, but this is something I've always wanted to do, and something I'll hopefully get my teeth into. And enjoy. I'm not committing to saying I'm definitely building it, but I'm certainly thinking about it. What we're going to do today to add a bit of content to this because I've got no build cars to show um, is we're going to have a look through the box of the kit, look at the aftermarket, look at the books, and we'll go from there. So it's probably going to take quite a while to go through. So if you don't want to watch it, skip ahead, whatever, 20, 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes, 
and just go to the end of the video because it might not interest everybody, but trust me, this detail, these detail kits are phenomenal. Absolutely amazing. I've been terrified to build this kit, and I'm not going to lie, I still am, but I just need a nice project of something I'm really passionate about and interested in to dive straight into, keep me distracted, keep me busy. It's not going to be a video build, so do not even ask if it's going to be a video build. This would be a hundred parts long, and it would kill the mojo doing it. So this is going to be my build, I'll take plenty of pictures, I'll do regular bench updates, I'll show stage by stage as we go through by pictures and through overhead camera, we'll have a look at it. Uh, this is a build for me, something I've always wanted to do and um, I'm really, really considering doing it. I'm not committed totally, but I am considering doing it. I'm going to, I'm going to sit back today and have a think and have a look through. Once we go through all this in a minute, you'll see the amount of stuff of it, it's phenomenal. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking of doing it. So, let's go and we'll have a quick look around here, quick look at the fish, people keep asking about the fish and the shrimp, so we'll have a quick look at that, and then um, we'll come back and we'll have a look at the McLaren. Right, so you've seen this many times, I always do a video when it changes, and here we are now. So this is my 12 by 8 foot uh, modelling studio, uh, it's self-contained, out in the garden, separate from the house, fully heated, insulated, warm as toast, and there's everything in here I need. So, a little bit of a switch around lately, as you see, some spray booth, a nice stock of kitchen rolls that came me through the following months. Uh, I've got a full stock of paint, kits, everything I need in here to keep me going and entertained. So, plenty of kits in the stash. Plenty of Lego to keep me entertained as well, I should have feel the need. Um, but a bit of a thinning out of the stash, so we kind of refined it in touch, including... A lot of the bike kits, we got rid of our, a lot of the doubles and triples that we had, and still left with a very, very nice bike kit selection. We got some more Lego down there as well on a very annoying shelf that always needs dusting. We got my display case, which again, we sold a few kits off. We've got a complete shelf free there almost. Um, some bikes, cars, more cars, loads and loads and loads. And you can see there's the odd space here or there where I can add some finished builds now. There's a few more of these for sale on eBay. There's me, hello. And um, yes, so we can add some build kits now without worry. Like I say, decent stash of kits. I have multiples of the same kit because I guarantee someone's going to ask why because I have multiples of decal uh, sets for them to do them in different schemes. So that's why I've got four or five or even six of some kit because I have loads of aftermarket schemes, um, over 100 aftermarket decal sets in my collection some spare bike kits there that are for parts like i say these are all kits up here i've now got my tamiya primer and some lego up there too a few odds and sods over there <laughs> yes one that'll definitely get some attention and a few bits there as well this is my workbench it's always kept spick and span and clean and the ultimate modular storage stuff really does its job really well uh, mac imax doing an update uh, and as you see, we've got Lego, loads of sundries, loads of paints. I've got the full LP range, all the colourful Mr. Colour range, Alclads, AK Extreme, Super Metallics. We've got a nice range of Gravity, which is ever-growing, some spare glues, loads of Zero, the full range of Mr. W Aqueous. And a serious problem I have is collecting Tammy TS rays. That is too deep, that drawer. Too deep. There's about 100 cans in there, but I'm not going to run out. Everybody laughed at me, but yeah, I'm set for paint. So the aquarium, <clears throat> it's my 80 litre ecosystem. So there's no heater, no filter. It's all naturally filtered by the plants. It's heated by the room. It sits around 24 to 26 degrees centigrade. It's a very well insulated cave of mine. Uh, the plants do all the um, filtering of the water, fed by the ammonia off the very small stocking level of endler guppies I have. I've got a very nice colony of cherry shrimp, yellow shrimp, and a mono shrimp as well. Just a load of youngster uh, yellow shrimps, made, uh, well, bred, and they're slowly colouring up. They're clear at the minute, but they're slowly colouring up. As you can see, we've got tons of snails, loads of ram's horn snails, some trumpet snails as well, and everybody's very happy. They've not long been fed, so they're going around picking all the remnants up, but they breed regularly. We've always got shrimplets and half and full-grown shrimp in there. As you can see, there's one of my Endler guppies. That's my favourite one my little boy loves. Uh, he's called him Lightning. <laughs> Rainbow Lightning, I think he called him. Beautiful fish. 
as you can see, everyone's happy and content. Plants are growing well. Uh, they need another trim, actually, by the look of it. Uh, we've got a nice little algae pocket down here, which I might get rid of, but the shrimp kind of like picking through and it's doing no harm. But we get no algae problems anymore. There's 50 watts of light. The tank gets um, regular fertilizers via liquid. Everyone's well fed. And all that's in there is a power head to circulate water. There's no filter, no heater. And we've got a very simple CO2 system up in that corner. And as you can see, plant grows nice. It's lush. All the plants are looking pretty healthy. <clears throat> There's one or two that don't grow so well. Um, <clears throat> my S reapings doesn't go great, but it's still there. It's surviving. Uh, I think the snails like to munch on it, as you can see, but it is growing well. And like I can say, everyone's very content, and it's very nice to watch and look after. So, highly recommend it. If you've got good filtration in your cave, you can have an aquarium, no problem at all. So, as you can see, it's changed a little bit in here again. I always take a video when it changes because it's my personal record of how things have evolved over the years, and this has changed massively over the uh, seven years I've had it now. Um, so i sold out a lot of duplicate kits, kits I don't think I'm going to build, uh, kits I can get again if I really want to, anything I don't, I look at and think I'm not going to build that, I've got rid of, sold the build, uh, the part build, sorry, sold the kit off um, to various places, and you know, other people can get enjoyment out of them, some of them are quite rare, some of the bikes as well, I had doubles and triples of some of them. Um, and I was just sat there one day thinking, this is crazy. I've got all these kits. I'm never going to build three versions of one particular bike. Um, although I do like the RC211 and I've built three. Um, so I decided to sell them on. Um, yes, and that's what I did. Also, when I room in the display case, I thought, right, time's come for this. So I stuck a few of the models up on eBay. Uh, a few have gone, there's a few up on there as well. Uh, I also got propositioned about my Tamiya Esco Cosworth and Sierra Cosworth, which I said I wouldn't sell. But money talks, I got offered a fair bit of money for them, and uh, I sold them on. So they've gone as well, but we will revisit them. Uh, Sadly Scale Productions is out of the BBS RS rooms at the minute, so I can't do the Sierra. Uh, but I have bought the dual violet metallic colour, it's like a light purple colour for the Escort. And I will revisit it very soon, probably, as well. I'll do a Monte Carlo edition uh, escort. So, yes, cleared out room in there for stuff, which is brilliant. Uh, I cleared out room in here for stuff. As you can see, I've got Lego up there with used to be kits. In fact, I think you can just see the back of the Tantive up there, maybe. I don't know. Move my lights. That's a bit better now. Um, and just rearrange it a little bit. So, I think it looks better. Um, I think it does. A little bit less cluttered. Fish are doing great. Everyone's happy with Larry in there. And um, that's that. Right, let's go over ahead and have a look at this kit. Get a cup of tea, get comfy. If you don't want to watch it, just get by it. But trust me, it's worth a watch. The detail kits are pretty phenomenal. Right then, I've had to put my camera super high up today. A lot higher, about a foot higher than it normally is to fit this monstrous box in shot. So, as explained, this is my Holy Grail kit. This was a kit I wanted for a long time. I bought it just when they were going out of production. I paid a normal price, about £150. I got it just in time. Um, one of the last ones, I think. Ignore this. It doesn't come with this. I'll show what it does come with in a minute. So, I'm a big Ersin Senna fan. For me, this is the epitome of his ultimate car. Sadly, the one he died in as well, if I remember right. Yeah, I'm sure it is. MP4-6. Um, and with the Marlboro scheme, this is the car seeded my love of uh, tobacco sponsorship on cars as you know I love anything with tobacco sponsorship on or drink it's just they're iconic for me so this is where it all started so it's a 12 scale McLaren MP4-6 in uh, the Marlboro scheme now the base kit alone is absolutely phenomenal we get this beautiful shell I'm not going to take anything out of the bag it's all still sealed so you can have a look with me, but we're not taking any of this out of the bag. We'll have a close look at the aftermarket. This is all staying in. So we've got the beautiful, iconic body shape. We've got the um, chassis in there. Well, the monocoque cockpit, I suppose it is, in there too. We've got the wheels there at the back, beautifully made. Uh, and we've got the obligatory screw bag um, and screws and steering pinions and what have you. Plenty of screws in this thing. They're definitely going to keep you busy for some time. 
um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful kit. And like I say, for me, a truly iconic uh, motorsport car. The day Ayrton died, it ruined F1 for me. It was never the same again. The guy was a legend, a phenomenal driver, uh, and just a natural sheer talent, especially in the wet. Phenomenal driver in the wet. And he was definitely one of the biggest um, losses of um, motorsport of that era. As well as, uh, was it Roland Rattenberg, I think it was, who died the day before, the weekend before. Again, he's usually overshadowed. A lot of people say that. Uh, but again, another tragic loss. Um, and yeah, that's enough of that. So in here, we've got these beautiful bits. There is loads of plastic. In here, we've got the engine. Uh, components we've got uh, various suspension components and what have you although this is going to get replaced which we'll explain in a bit we've got our canopies we've got two different ones there um, I'm not sure the difference oh yeah ones I don't know they look the same we'll have a look in a bit we'll figure that out uh, we've got a decal placement sheet as well there too um, so you've got your typical full Tamiya Plastic part, the under tray uh, for the front and back, and again, all the various components, all beautifully moulded. The seat's beautiful. It's not a new kit. I can't remember the exact age of it. I'm looking for a date on anything. I think I'll look at the instructions. It might tell me. 2007. I think that's when it was re-released. I think it's older than that. But it's a beautiful, beautiful kit. So if we go over to this side, and over here we have. Um, silver foil. Uh, I think we've got some carbon in there. Is it carbon as well? I can't remember. We might open that one and have a look in a sec. Seat belts, which we'll replace. Um, and then a whole parts tray of goodies. Tyres, which are renowned for cracking, I believe. Mine look really good. Uh, you've got the obligatory Tammy screwdriver. All white metal um, upper arms, uh, front and back. Uh, loads of metal pieces in here, springs, a suspension, a wrench, and this beautiful, I'm going to guess it's sly-moulded engine as well. And like I say, I'm not going to video build this, but we'll come back with regular bench updates. I'll take regular pictures of the progress, we'll do slideshows of the progress, and we'll do regular video updates as well. Now, like I say, I'm not 100% committed, I'm about 90% committed to building this. I'm going to have a little bit of a sit and chill today, and have a little think about what I want to do um, with this, but it's definitely up there to do. So that is the base kit. We've got the instructions as well, which we'll look at near the end. I've got, I kept all that out. So I'm just gonna pop this out of the way for now, just so it's not in the way, because the box is huge. The box is, I'll measure it for you now, when we get this lid on. It's, a, it's two foot by foot and a half. It's huge. It's a massive, massive box. Luckily it fits under my bench, which is why I cleared the bike out of the way, um, and that's that. So, what aftermarket have I added to this? Well, I'm going to bring the camera down again. There we go, we're right down now. We'll keep it on a black background, I think, or shall we? No, we'll go for the green. Let me grab my green cutting mat. There we go. So, what aftermarket do we have? I'm going to get my other light on too, so we've got a bit more light on the situation. There we are. So we have got air funnels. So we've got a beautiful resin outer piece there for it. As you can see, some beautiful PE for the top and these beautiful intakes uh, out of turned aluminium, which are just absolutely stunning. Again, I'm not going to open any of this now because I don't want to lose parts. As and when we come to a section, I'll take them out, organize them into those little parts trays I've got, and we can go from there. But beautiful, the resin is amazing there's a particular piece in the engine set uh we might even open and have a look at because the rocker covers look phenomenal so there's set number one now like i said the kit's 150 pounds all this aftermarket cost me 350 pounds it's very expensive all individual sets i've got you can buy it as one set now all together but it's beautiful so these are the smaller sets we've got here we've got the antenna as well which is beautiful very nice piece of brass with a turned aluminium mount as well some rivets some tubing some fittings and what have you the attention to detail on this is phenomenal and these are only the small bits we've got our drive shafts again a beautiful um absolutely stunning bits of turned aluminium 
got the shafts, you've got some PE in there as well. Again, absolutely stunning stuff, beautiful. And we have some Marlboro decals. Kit doesn't come, I didn't even look at the decals, I just thought now we'll get those out in a minute. Um, the kit doesn't come with Marlboro sponsorships because uh, you can't. So these are aftermarket. Now, I bought these a long time ago and then I realised they're a museum collection. They look like normal water slides to me. Uh, not those stupid high tech things that fall to bits. So I'm going to try and use these. I'm going to order another set of TB decals. Uh, it does a full set for me. I think it'd be good to have spares anyway. Problem is, I've got to get them from Italy. I don't really get any posts from Italy at the minute, so we'll, we'll play that by ear. But that's that. So they're all those. I'm going to quickly grab the, the kit decals as well as a continuity, because I must have completely missed where they are. Zap them in there. Let's have a little look. I said I was going to open this anyway, so we might as well. It's never been opened before. It's still sealed. As you can see, it was the amount of touch. So let's see what we get in here. We get some looks like burr metal foil. It's got a bit damaged in the back, uh, the box. So it just looks like a self adhesive foil. It's quite thick. So depending on where it goes, we'll look at that. We may. It's pretty bad damage in there. This is the thing when you put things in bags and not secure them properly. So we've got the kit decals, which to be fair quite thick but they don't look too bad at all like I said there's no sponsorship decals at all but yeah the kit decals look good the belts are these typical fabric ones from Tammy I'm not a big fan of them so we'll probably replace those hopefully I get the set in the uh, cockpit set I think I do and then we've got the number boards and a few other little bits and bobs there as well we've also got a bit of double sided tape and the Goodyear markings as well. So with the TV decals, you get Goodyear decals, which would probably be better. Um, so I think I will go and order. It's only £10, £11 posted. So it's not, not really expensive. Bit of a shame about that metal foil. But hey, it's just one of those things. So tell me your bags drive me nuts. But thankfully there's no staples in these. But they're still crap. <laughs> get in there. There we go. Oh, no. Right, I'll tell you what. We'll put that there. We'll do that there. And we'll sort that out later on. So aftermarket wise, I'll show you all the boxes and then we'll go through them one by one. Like I say, it's going to take a while this, but trust me, it is well worth sticking around for because the aftermarket sets are stunning. So we have brake set. We have the cockpit set. We have a front dampeners and chassis detail up set. We have the radiator and ECU set and the daddy we have the mp4 6 engine detail set so we'll start with this one this is my favorite one. Oh, that one's absolutely huge just for a radiator and a few things so we'll start with this this is typical what you get these are between depending on the size of them 30 and nearly 100 pound a piece and this is what you get so I'll show you the detail added so you get instructions First of all, with each set, get it open. So this one has got three terrifying pages of all sorts of stuff. You got wiring looms, all sorts of attachments, and this is why I'm terrified. And this is the first step in the build, so it's pretty amazing. So you got two pages there. All the parts are laid out here as well. So absolutely phenomenal amount of detail, but utterly utterly terrifying is what I think of this <laughs> which is why I'm only 90% committed to building it right now and then the rest of it there as well so it's a phenomenal detail of set so those instructions are actually not bad instructions thankfully so they shouldn't prove too tricky to do and this is the detail you get and bear in mind the engine isn't painted but that is the detail it adds to the engine which is just phenomenal. Anything that's in Top Studio is not painted or shown. It's, it's all grey. So you can see the difference. But the difference is phenomenal. It's absolutely stunning. Absolutely beautiful. And absolutely terrifying at the same time. It really is. So in here, we're not going to open any of this up. I may open these up. I don't know. I don't think we need to actually. 
So we've got a whole bag of PE. So there's one, two, three, four, five frets of PE in there. There is all sorts in here. Fasteners, brackets, all sorts in there. Absolutely loads of it. So again, terrifying. <laughs> in here we've got our uh, dampers, our damper um, struts. Uh, is that steering? I can't remember now what that is. Then we've got some nuts on the back. We've got some um, connectors, electrical connectors, nuts, some parts. What else we got in there? All our wiring. So there's loads of heat shrink, wiring, brass rod, all sorts of stuff in there. And a bit more of that foil type malarkey on the back. So again, beautiful. A whole bag of uh, 0.9mm rivets as well, which are beautifully made, absolutely stunning. And then in the final bag, which is full of resin, we've got a whole load of electrical um, and hose connectors, I assume now. There is a ton of them in there. Absolutely beautiful. Top Studios resin is second to none. It is flawlessly done, especially these rocker covers. Uh, suspension arms there as well. Various components. It is just beautiful. And for me, the, the rocker covers are just absolutely stunning. Absolutely flawlessly cast. Flawlessly made. And they just look absolutely amazing. So that, this is what you get for your money. There's a few other parts down here as well, but for me those rocker covers are literally a thing of beauty. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. So that is just the engine detail of set. We've got a whole load more. I am going to go through them. So if you're interested, skip along, I don't mind. Not going to interest everybody. So this is a radiator and ECU set. Again, we've got a page of instructions. Again, equally terrifying. As we can see, there's a lot of wiring on this one, a lot of connectors, and a lot of work to do. Uh, <laughs> so yes, a lot of PE, lots of work, but it will look stunning when it's done. Absolutely beautiful. I get the, the obligatory sheet. Oh, there's another, another sheet of instructions as well. Oh my God, that really is terrifying. So these are the wiring harnesses to make, as you can see. Again, utterly, utterly terrifying. The ECU made from multiple components of photo etch. We've got uh, location points with various parts on the chassis as well, or the body or the monocoque, wherever it is. And again, beautiful. And if I just grab the part out of there, I'll show you some of the built up stuff. So there we go. There's a beautiful picture of the car with all the Top Studio stuff on it. So it goes through them. Oh, a, that's the 120th one, not even the 12th. And that thing looks beautiful as well. But there we go. There's the 12 scale. Brand new bulkhead. So we have to cut the front of that off and add this detail in. As you can see, there's a lot of detail there. Actually, no, this is the back. My bad. There's another part of the front we've got to cut off. I think that's in another, another part of it. But the detail is just stunning. Absolutely stunning. The ECU, all the wiring, everything is just absolutely beautiful. So that's that. And then the parts we've got electrical connectors, various sizes. Um, we've got resin, and uh, they're all turned as well. Looks like turned brass. We've got resin connectors and hose joints, pipes. Uh, look like reservoirs for certain things, I'm not sure what, but just a truly, truly beautiful set. And there's a ton of photo etch in here as well. So that's the bulkhead. Loads of little pieces of photo etch there as well. Grills, um, structural parts, don't even know what they are. Um, that'll be the ECU fins on the back so again absolutely stunning you can see what i mean now about this kit 
and how super, super detailed it is. And also why I'm absolutely terrified of it too. It's been brought out of the box several times and every time I've brought it out, it's got one step closer to being built. But it usually ends back up in the box because I think, yeah, I don't want to do that just yet. But I kind of do. It's either this or the 12 scale Jägermeister Porsche. So we will see. So this is the front dampeners and bulkhead now. A smaller set. Equally as good. I don't think there's any colour parts in this one to show anything. But there's our instructions. There's the build-up of our dampeners. As you can see. Not as terrifying this one. Looks pretty straightforward. This side we've got to cut the front of that off. And then we're leaving parts free. I've got no idea what's going on. I'm assuming it's done because these rivets hold the body back on, which is phenomenal if it does, which is really cool. Um, but again, a lot of work there to do. So it's certainly keep me busy for a while. And now you can see why I'm not going to video build it because we will be here for God knows how long doing it. So more suspension components there as well, all tailing down aluminium, some beautiful springs there as well. On the back, we've got more support arms, loads of resin, beautiful resin fluid reservoirs there. They are absolutely stunning. Uh, more connectors, more joints, more photo etch there, as well as a couple of sheets there. And on the back, some more brass rod and wiring. Like I say, these were all sold separately, and I bought them all. They do do like a super detail upset now, which now comes um, in one go. Cockpit set, there's some beautiful parts in here, absolutely stunning, so I will show you this first. If you go to Top Studio's website, they show pictures of all this on online, and it's just stunning. So in here we've got a beautiful resin steering wheel, an absolutely beautiful turned aluminium gear shift knob, belts, all sorts of components for the steering, uh, for the cockpit, sorry, and it's just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, so we've got a stunning piece of resin in that steering wheel. Absolutely lovely. And I think that's an instrument panel. We've got a very, very nice turned brass gear stick at the top. Some other brass parts, some connectors, a shaft, so on and so forth. A load of beautiful PE in there too. Including all our seatbelt buckles, which is very nice. Some more electrical components there and in the back some very high quality black ribbon which does look very good very very nice so again another beautiful set that's really going to enhance that cockpit a lot it's going to look super super cool last one this is the last detail upset and again this is a beauty as well now you probably see but this is my holy grail kit now something i always wanted and I managed to get, there is other aftermarket sets from Accuston, whatever the hell they're called. Accuston. <laughs> Me and Tim could never figure out how to say that. Um, but I think the Top Studio is superior. I think Thunder Valley or somebody might do a set as well. So these are the brakes. So again, these are another almost work of art in themselves. So various components there to do, various parts to look at. Uh, we're going to drill into the front wheels a little bit, which again is a little bit scary. But doable and then here we've got threaded um, wheel connectors threaded nuts um, loads of tiny little rivet type parts there as well we've got the brake discs there which look to be yeah it looks like white metal very very nice turned aluminium a whole load of photo etch and yeah again another beautiful set one of the smaller sets in there but again, it'll add a lot of detail. This is definitely a kit to display with a wheel off, body panels open. Um, but you kind of need a second one. Build one as the full car because the exterior doesn't have a huge amount of detail. So you can pick and choose the parts you need for that. Let's get the cockpit set, um, some of the suspension parts maybe that can be seen. And then this go to town of all the panels off, wheel off. And everything to show because a lot of it's going to get hidden sadly but it's just the way it is 
So that's all the detail of parts. Like I say, there's a lot to it. It's quite uh, in depth. I'll have a quick look through the instructions and I've got a couple of beautiful books there too. So it's an A4 sheet. There's some information on the McLaren there as well. If you want to read it, I'll bring it up. Yeah, Gordon Murray involvement with this. And if you haven't watched Retro Power on YouTube, go and watch those guys. They did Gordon Murray's Mark 1 Escort, which was stunning. So if you want to read that, pause it, you can have a little read. Some information about the kit and the car itself. Modeling, how to do things, you know, don't, I don't know, wallpaper your house while you're doing your decaling or jump off the roof while you're shaking a can of paint. It is random as hell. But there's a few tips there and that should you feel the need to have a look. And then we're straight in. And like I say, we're straight in with the engine. It's a good starting point because it's a good place to get some enthusiasm. But you're going to have to be cross-referencing your instructions from the kit to the detail part and paying attention to what's used, what isn't used, what's modified, what's not, what's not, what's not modified, etc, etc. So well worth um, just taking your time with this. But it seems pretty easy. The kit out of the box looks a pretty simple build and it still looks like it'll build up into a really, really nice kit. Um, but adding all these extras we've got is going to make a huge difference. Now, you're going to build the engine, the brakes, and all the front part, uh, the rear part of all the suspension. So by the time you finish, you've got a really nice sub-assembly dump, and hopefully it'll spare you through. And what I'll probably do is start on this and start on the bodywork at the same time, because that's going to take a while to do as well. Then it goes through to the cockpit, suspension, all sorts of malarkey here. Malarkey is the word of the day, by the way. And yes, it goes through front suspension, rear suspension, the steering, the brakes. Nice, clear, concise instructions that we always expect from Tamiya. Exhaust, spoiler, front spoiler. It's all screwed in place, which is pretty cool. Wheels, tyres, so it, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. It even comes with a base, apparently. Oh, they didn't see a base in there. Hmm. Good point, actually. I didn't see a base in the box. Either way, it's no problem. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful kit from Tamiya. With all these extra details, it's going to enhance it immensely. Now I've got two books. We've got Model Factory Heroes, McLaren MP4-6 in detail. And the McLaren MP4-6, 91-92 from Model Factory Hero. It's a Joe Honda Racing Pictorial Series by Model Factory Hero. So we'll go for this one first because... As a reference, this is going to be hard to beat because it's all beautiful close-up pictures of the car which are going to prove absolutely invaluable and if that isn't an iconic piece of racing history, I don't know what is. That's up there with um, the Williams uh, Renault that uh, Nigel Mansell drove for me, but this to me is my epitome of an iconic motorsport legend. Beautiful car. Um, yeah, absolutely stunning. And this book is amazing. These, I think these are both out of print now. I don't think you can get them. Um, but as a reference, it's going right through a walk around of the entire car. There's the body shell off. You can see all the interior parts. And again, it's good reference for what we've got to do and build for colors, for wiring, um, for the wheels. Uh, so on and so forth. So it's a very, very good reference of everything. You've got close of all the suspension. So it's a very, very good reference. And hopefully should help with the build. So we'll just go through. I'm not going to dilly dally. Just going to have a good look. So beautiful. So with that, with that resin um, steering wheel. Um, I think we'll put micro balloons on to give it a little bit of texture and that'll make it look a bit more realistic. Uh, the gear shift is there somewhere as well. There it is. And as you can see, it's brass, so it's already the right colour. Looks the right shape and everything. The pedal box is there. Again, this is a totally manual car. Um, I don't think there's a lot of driver's aids on this either. And yeah, to drive these back in that day, yeah, you need to be a decent driver and centre. Certainly was. Um, beautiful absolutely beautiful the detail in this is stunning it's some real nice close-up i mean just close-up of these connectors is going to prove totally invaluable when you come to build it 
you can see where all the brackets are and you see all the solder points on the radiator it's just stunning it really really is absolutely stunning I like my books if you know me you know I like books I've got a load of aircraft books for sale as well because uh, I'm not building aircraft anymore but the car books I've got a few not a lot but they're all decent quality beautiful pictures of those exhausts absolutely stunning and all the detail on top of the engine covers the rocker covers and those rocker covers themselves as well look absolutely beautiful some really nice detail so this should prove invaluable if and when I do this build um, definite advantage to have as a reference material so that's that one so loads of close-up pics in there which are very very handy and then we've got this one this is about three times thicker beautiful picture of Santa on the front very very nice and then in here we've got pictures of the car in action looks like Monaco some history of the car it's in Japanese and English so that's not bad at all the car, uh, center in his element there in the wet good pictures of center himself and as you can hear this has not been opened before that much you hear the spine opening up yeah some great pictures of the car some close-ups of some more at the back as well and some great pics of the car in action and the man himself as well uh, I think it's going through some of the season uh, the races as well all the spare parts again more reference pictures so you can see here the exhaust manifold has been used now it's got a bit of heat to it and yeah it's another beautiful book we can't do every page on this because we'll be here every day so I'm going to skip through and just go through a Gerhard Burger very very cool some great pics of the car in action really is and again some really nice reference pictures too so we skipped to near the back I'm sure we get a lot more reference pictures of the car itself again good pictures of the suspension really really cool absolutely beautiful book so you got one for reference and one for just reference and you know you can see how things sit and um, closer pictures of a lot of things very cool there you go beautiful manifold on that one very very nice yeah so again another worthwhile book again sadly out of print but still stunning again here we go there's a few pics I think these are the other book anyway your reference shots good for your decal placement and rivets and what have you nice interior picks again are they different to the other one they actually look a little bit different than the other pictures there's a few different pictures in there i think there's a few the same i think there's actually a few in there we didn't see in the other one which is pretty cool and again beautiful reference pictures absolutely stunning so there we go there's a look through that immense kit of an immense car driven by an immense driver with an immense amount of aftermarket and should look very good when it's done i'm going to sit and decide today whether i want to build it let me know what you think in the chat down below let's go back to me there we go that's a deep in-depth look at that phenomenal kit it looks absolutely amazing like i say i'm not fully committed to building it just yet but i really am thinking about it so let me know what you think about that in the comments down below like I said, the bike we will get back to, and the other part build kit we will get back to, and the Chevelle will be done very, very soon as well. So I've got this little dude with me today. Say hello, James. Hi. Hello. Hello. So James is obviously off school now for the foreseeable future, aren't you? So he's being homeschooled for a bit, aren't you? Doing homework at home, uh, which he's doing very well. Playing. You're helping Mummy with UMP orders as well, aren't you? He's been helping Mummy in the, the UMP um, office, I guess it is, isn't it? You've been helping everyone's orders, and yeah, we're all doing well, which is great. So keep your family safe, safe, stay at home, stay at the bench, isn't it? That's the motto, isn't it? Stay at home, isn't it? Yeah, so what are you going to do today in ideas? No? Going to go on the Xbox for a bit? No? Have you done any homework today? No? Well, that's what we're doing then, we're doing homework, aren't we? We're going to go do number bots. Yeah? Do some of that and do some what? Drawing, colouring, let me guess, Lego. 
My God, I can't get a word in edgeways with you today. You know what I mean? Rub, 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 you? You okay? Yeah? He wants to be in the video, so I thought I'd bring him in for the very end. See all the fishies? All happy, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah? Your fishies happy in the house as well, aren't they? Are we going to put some shrimp and snail in our there one day? Because we can't buy any now, really, can we? At the minute. He wants some of my cherry shrimp and some of my ram's horn and trumpet snails. Yeah? Yeah? So we'll grab some one day, can't we, and put them in there? Yeah? There we go. Right, so there we go. That's the end of the video today. Uh, as I say, check out upretail.com. We've got a brand new polish system I talked about earlier. Just been released. I've been using that for months. Every car I've finished since Christmas. Just before, actually. Late November. It's been polished with that. Very hard to keep it a secret. Loads of other people have been testing it for me. as all close friends. Absolutely glow on report. It works fantastic. And I can't wait until some of you guys out there and girls um, give us some feedback on it too. It's been released... Friday, I think it was, and uh, we've had a massive run on sales for UMP. We're catching up on the sales, we are getting there. Obviously, we had an influx of 40 on Friday night and early through Saturday morning. We had loads of orders come in, uh, primarily for the polish, which is fantastic. So, catching up as we go, aren't we? Mummy's got tons of parcels out there, hasn't she? Yeah, it's only Sunday morning, I think we've got about 50 ready to go already, haven't we? By the time Mummy's done tonight, there'll be about 70 to go, won't there? Lots and lots and lots. Mummy's been very busy. <laughs> so, yeah, we are getting there. Like I say, check out the polish. I will do a video on it. You will see it in the Chevelle, and I'll do a standalone video as well. So, check out upretail.com. Check out the National Sky Model Facebook page or forum. My Paul ISM modeling page where all my personal modeling work is shared. Live on the bench page for the Friday night shows, the off air hangout group to join our off air hangouts, which if you, you know, stuck and bored, you can come join us. And hit the subscribe button, the bell notification, and the thumbs up on the videos. The bell notification on those five, all the latest videos, including all our daily live shows as well. Daily live hangouts there are really. Stay at the bench, they're called. Uh, which is just informal. Us guys chatting, having a laugh, doing a bit of modelling. You can come and join us and uh, watch that as well. So, thanks for your time today. Hopefully it's been a nice long one this today. It's what I plan to do. Um, and I'll try and up the rate of the after benches. Um, it's hard to do, we haven't got content but if we start this, I can do regular updates on that, which would be very, very good as well. So there we go. Stay safe. Keep your family safe. Stay at home. For those who are out there who are key workers, thank you very much for everything you do. We've got a close friend, Luke, who's a paramedic. And, yeah, phenomenal work you guys and girls are doing out there. So well done. Well done to everybody. But stay as safe as you can. And hopefully we'll all get through this and get back to normal soonish. We shall see. So thanks for watching today, everyone. Please leave a comment down below. I do read them all. I've got a massive backlog to catch up on. I started the other day and I must have answered about 50 and there was loads more left. I do plan to answer them all. So you might get a late reply from a few weeks back, but you will get one from me. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought of the video. If you like the longer bench update, if you like the in-depth look at a kit, because I've got loads of kits like this. I've got a few aftermarket bits as well. And um, we, can, we can plan for that in the future. So thanks for watching today, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Say bye, James. Bye. Bye. Wave. Bye-bye.